And so we continue, uh, we continue this discussion about what's happening behind the scene on architecture uh, with, with a talk from Vince Padua, the executive vice president and CTO of Axway, about keeping the link between the legacy and the new from software factories to software refactories. Hello, Vince. How are you? Can you hear me, Vince? So we try again, refresh the page. Have you tried to turn it off and on again? Solving like 95% of all IT issues. Hello, Vince. Can you hear me? I made it. I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you fine. Uh, wow, nice. Uh, uh, yeah, nice uh, uh, world that you have behind you, right? I see Thank Robin you. Williams. I see some interesting stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so if, if you can share your slide with us, uh, we'll be able yeah. to start how to keep the link between the old and the new. Sure. Let me grab the right one. Hopefully you guys are seeing this okay now. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, if you put the presentation full screen, perfect. That's perfect. The stage is yours for 20 minutes. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Mehdi. Uh, thanks for having me here. And uh, I guess hello and, and, and welcome to uh, Everybody that's joined, wherever you are in the world, whether it's morning, afternoon, or, or evening, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Vince Padua. I'm the Chief Technology and Innovation Officer for Axway. Uh, Axway, for those of you that don't know, um, is certainly in the API management uh, business, one of the leaders uh, in the Gartner Magic Quadrant, uh, been in the business now for about a decade. Um, and I've been with the company now for almost uh, five years. The topic is, as you see here, uh, the link between legacy and new uh, or ecosystem versus wilderness. So the objective here is to uh, give you a little bit of, uh, I guess, uh, some thought provoking ideas and questions around how do you deal with um, investments, technology assets uh, that you've had, maybe that are considered legacy, or I think the new term is multi-generational uh, systems and applications with, let's say, the modern day world, uh, which is going to be cloud and, and APIs. You heard in the previous session, uh, if you were on with Vikas and, and Greg about events, uh, how do you kind of take what you had in the past to to what you want to be doing today and ultimately into the future? So a bit of a, a definition first is, you know, what is the wilderness? So the wilderness uh, sounds a lot like sort of legacy uh, software or legacy infrastructure, legacy applications. It's, you know, it's uncultivated, uninhabited. Uh, maybe you don't have the skills uh, any longer to really work on it. You kind of put it in the corner. And as long as it stays plugged in and running, um, you don't really want to touch it or, or deal with it, right? So somewhat been abandoned, minimally it's uh, been neglected. And in general, right, it's, it's not necessarily seen as an area that you really want to continue to invest in, even though uh, many of your core business applications may still be leveraging it and using it. And then if we look at the ecosystem side of this, which is really uh, a system, uh, could be plants, human species, systems, applications, et cetera, that are, are interconnected, um, exchanging uh, something, maybe it's oxygen, maybe it's nutrition, uh, maybe it's data uh, in this particular world. And you know, when we try to link the, the old and the new or the wilderness uh, and the ecosystem, you know, the goal is to, to sort of bring about a better together scenario, right? Whereby, you know, the wilderness is hydrated, uh, it's brought into sort of the modern day, um, you know, new things start to, to grow. You're able to leverage the systems in a way that you haven't before. And obviously we point to APIs uh, as a mechanism to do that. The challenge with all of this, uh, as always, and this is maybe a, an overused slide from the past, is that enterprise software is, is wildly complex, whether it is the, the, the legacy, you know, monolithic application or, even when we think about software today, it's all wildly, uh, wildly complex. And when we think of today, you know, one thing I like to tell folks um, who talk about complexity of IT is that, you know, congratulations, you've reached now digital complexity. What was, you know, legacy complexity or um, sort of black box applications or uh, the difficulty of sort of managing your own infrastructure. Well, now that we have had, um, you know, the fortune yeah. of, of living in an era where we have access to vast amounts of compute resources, network resources, applications, um, storage, et cetera, and with the wonderful, uh, you know, architecture and design pattern around APIs, we now have not just, um, you know, a, a plethora of applications and, and data services and applications to leverage, but all the, the many hundreds of thousands of millions of APIs, and then all of the teams. Uh, associated with, you know, creating, managing, you know, operating, securing, and delivering 
uh, all of those those different services. All of those services also have some desired outcome, right? So it could be, you know, I need to, um, you know, be uh, taking in events about a customer journey, as you heard on the previous session. Uh, it may be that I need to uh, update a customer record. It may mean that I need to uh, gather inventory status, uh, gather stock quotes. The end of, of APIs uh, is, is limitless uh, at this point in time. And so while we thought, you know, somehow, I don't know, cloud uh, was going to make lives a little bit easier, it was going to help us manage the complexity because we we're going to not have to manage with machines anymore um, and let it run someplace else. Uh, the challenge is that now with all the software uh, as it eats the world becomes uh, even more and more complex. And so you have this balance, right? Um, or this, 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 this challenging set of dynamics between the top part, which is sort of the new or the ecosystem that's being created, and then the legacy or the wilderness. And those legacy applications, maybe it's a, an old green screen manufacturing uh, operations application, or it's an ERP that you uh, pulled in uh, from a company that you acquired, or it's a, a legacy um, you know, a support database uh, that is arguably really not maintained that much anymore, but it has a bunch of critical uh, customer information uh, and historical references that you want to be able to go back to. And businesses are trying to figure out how do we, you know, one, uh, leverage the old, i.e. not just uh, in terms of uh, what it is currently doing for us, but how do we take advantage of it uh, with all the stuff that's on the top new, right? How do we enable our developers to take advantage of it? Um, how do we maybe create uh, new applications that may um, leverage that information? Uh, how do we offer maybe services from this legacy to third party consumers that are sitting on the outside? Maybe how do we even emit events um, from the, this legacy uh, applications um, silos? And so one way um, that people look at, at, at the challenge that is in front of us is via um, uh, the uh, the DevOps world, right? Or uh, the the DevOps research and assessment. So I know this is a very hard slide to see, but I'm just trying to put it here to say, it with with the 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 notion of of faster um, delivery of software, uh, the the quicker time to recover from failures, the desire to restore services uh, more frequently, uh, how long it takes to go from you know a developer's fingers all the way out to a customer's uh, experience. All the way, whether you're a low performer and trying to move further and further up, right? The business is looking more and more at, at software, whether you're on the ops side, whether you're on the security side, developer side, product side, et cetera, right? That value chain of delivery to customers is all sort of being looked at it through these lenses, right? How much of it can we automate, you know, uh, find the wait time and eliminate it? Uh, how do we use uh, the right tools to help us go faster? And in that whole sort of uh, dichotomy is the question of how do we take what has been, you know, our legacy uh, or, or the, the applications and the services that have maybe powered us to a certain point, but are now sort of either reached the limit or we think there's more value that we can uh, extract from them. And these sorts of metrics are very challenging to legacy infrastructure, right? They're even challenging to say even modern day uh, systems uh, and technology, let alone like the teams who are actually operating them. But when you throw it against the old, um, it becomes really, really uh, tough. And so um, I'm not here to try to uh, explain to you, you know, how do you sort of modernize a legacy application? Uh, I know that topic has been covered many times uh, in the past uh, from various uh, former API days, but I thought it'd be interesting to sort of throw, you know, a perspective from McKinsey who talks about, you know, how, do you, how should you go about dealing with the challenge? And, and the left-hand side here talks about, essentially bimodal IT. And you may have heard that uh, talked about by uh, different analyst companies who think about, you know, sort of you have sort of the green field versus the brown field, or you've got the sort of the legacy, which sort of, you know, care and feed and sort of keep it alive. And then you set up a, a new initiative that runs alongside of it. And maybe you modernize, maybe you don't, but you sort of keep them all separate. And then the right-hand side is really full-blown, you know, green field. Um, you know, we do need to, to really modernize the full of the infrastructure, figure out a way to sort of normalize the applications and ultimately deliver a better outcome for our, our customers, either get them the data faster, uh, deliver them a more rich experience, uh, know the customers uh, better than we do today, uh, et cetera. And there's always been sort of this position of, of choice. But I think the, the link between these two worlds, right? And if you use the, the, you know, the link uh, from the, or Zelda from the, from the link from the, the video game Zelda, sorry, is you should be able to do both. Right, it, it's you should be able to move uh, in a bimodal fashion, but also do greenfield, and we think that's possible, really, in large part via APIs. And if you look at sort of the the green box there in the bottom right, where you know you are looking for a flexible but standardized architecture, i.e., in many ways, um, it's going to be APIs. 
Um, it could be async API as you think about events, um, whereby you're now trying to deal with this spaghetti IT architecture that has been largely hindering your business growth, right? Either it's because you're losing, you lack the skills, um, maybe managing the infrastructure uh, isn't efficient or it's not sort of moving forward as fast as you want, uh, or you know the, the teams that are trying to deliver uh, the better experience to the outcome simply takes too long for them to get what they need from this legacy infrastructure, whether they're waiting on IT, uh, whether they're waiting on, you know, other sort of business departments that are, are sort of, uh, you know, gatekeeping uh, access to that to that inf uh, infrastructure. Regardless, you know, we want to go faster. We want to have sort of the standardized interfaces and deal with sort of the sprawl of the spaghetti uh, in front of us. And so, going back to McKinsey, uh, they paint a, a very beautiful picture of what uh, I sort of jokingly refer to as the example of every enterprise API taxonomy. Uh, because it wouldn't it be wonderful if every enterprise uh, was sort of this this clean uh, in terms of its its basic architecture, where you've got the the different data pieces and the applications uh, and services on the bottom, the system APIs, the process to experience APIs, and some are in the cloud, and, and ultimately uh, some are not. And I think a lot of the folks on on in the session today would like to to believe that they're evolving to this way, or maybe they believe they have a false way, and they've got wonderful operations wrapped around all layers uh, of this picture to say that you know, we are operating at, at full efficiency, right? We're able to, to link both the, the legacy and the new and deliver a great sort of uh, digital outcome uh, for our customers. What we have experienced um, uh, is, is that while a lot of enterprises have been pretty good at, at leveraging and taking advantage of let's call it the architectural you know, approach with, with APIs, uh, even with events, uh, which have been around also for a very long time, what starts to happen is, is this picture right, is you have sort of uh, this decentralized innovation where, where groups are building APIs and then to manage them, a lot of different platforms are being deployed. So if you're looking on the right-hand side, uh, it'll be a host of, of folks that, that you know and understand and, and love, right? Um, whether it's the, the cloud vendors, uh, maybe it's uh, the startup vendors uh, who are all coming in to, to take care of uh, the challenge around managing the APIs within your enterprise. And they all come in and maybe solve different problems. If you're looking at the left-hand side of the slide, um, this is a survey that, that we have recently conducted, but it's not yet publicly available, which it surveyed 800 uh, different decision makers in IT and found that, that generally um, most enterprises today have at least three API platforms and moving to four, uh, but that as time marches on, they are looking to essentially uh, integrate and join up all of these API programs uh, cohesively across their whole organization. And so one, one thing that we have uh, talked to a lot of customers about and worked to solve is not just the sort of API sprawl and the connection between your legacy and your new, but also all of that infrastructure, right? How do you get the visibility? How do you get the automation? How do you get the shared policy and consistency at a corporate level um, all the way out to your end users? And so when you sort of look at that from um, an API perspective, at least at a platform level, you start to sort of look into the matrix and try to figure out, okay, well, you know, where do I use what, you know, who do I use? And if I have many of these things, you know, how do I discover really ultimately what I have? Uh, or how do I trace really what's happening uh, in my environment? I mean, we have found somewhere between you know, 20 to 30% of most APIs in enterprise are actually essentially unmanaged, uh, right? They're, they're pretty raw. Um, they're not behind uh, any sort of policy, uh, whether it's you know, on, the, on the traffic management side, whether it's on the security side, et cetera. They're out there just sort of doing their thing. And when you're in the enterprise, and let's say you've opened up your legacy, but you have these APIs everywhere, you know, when you have multiple sort of platforms uh, in your environment, what do you do? Well, we think there is an approach to it, um, which is uh, delivering the, the concept of agents, right? So yes, it is actually good um, to have as many APIs as a business needs. And it's good that you probably have started with a platform to help you sort of manage and govern them because we do think APIs should be managed and governed. They should be secure, right? We should be protecting either corporate information or consumer information or our partner information. All of that is a good thing. The challenge now is, you know, if you want to increase the reuse of your services, right? If you want to understand really what's being used and how, if you want to have shared policy, you're going to need now infrastructure and tooling to do that, i.e. the agents if we're sort of going along with the, the matrix uh, scenario. And so um, we have uh, provided uh, to customers the idea of, of a discovery agent, right? Whereby um, sitting behind multiple different uh, API platforms, right? We can discover the different types, uh, different APIs that you have, uh, even though, even if they come in different types, uh, whether they're part of a mesh uh, or not, and begin to move them uh, at least up from a visibility and discovery perspective 
into a common portal or a common catalog, uh, whether it's a REST API or it's an async API, et cetera, you'd be able to do that regardless of the API platform that may be ultimately managing and governing them, them directly. The second is around traceability, i.e. really usage and consumption, uh, the trends, uh, the traffic, um, the different uh, you know, uh, response headers uh, that may be coming back. Um, all of those things are very necessary to understand sort of the health now of your API environment and of your ultimate uh, program. And again, to do this in a way that doesn't limit you on, on having you know, a monolithic deployment of only one type of API platform or an API gateway, but to at times you know, allow sort of you know, the ground growth of using the right platform at the time, uh, but knowing that as, as things go on, you may have to deploy another platform or you may have to acquire and, and use a legacy platform that may be there, but at the same time, you still want that common view to discovery and trace and, and ultimately management. And so uh, we have this thing in Axway called Amplify uh, that has this, this approach, right? Where you have this centralized management plane uh, that includes a portal and, and catalog and, and the ability to uh, publish and subscribe to all the different sort of endpoints uh, that you may wish. And certainly it works with our data planes uh, on the API front, but also with third parties, uh, whether that is uh, the mega cloud folks uh, or other um, you know, upstarts that are in the API world uh, that we provide as support out of the box, as well as you know, uh, an SDK and whatnot for you to extend if you want to um, bring in other uh, platforms that maybe we don't support. The other aspect that I've already mentioned is the catalog aspect of this, right? So once you've sort of gathered and understood everything that's in your environment, how do you now make it easier for others to consume? Whether that is a classic sort of REST API or it's GraphQL or async or events, Right, all of those uh, interfaces are touching some system down below. But if you want to have a great way to collaborate with uh, other developers in your organization or with partners outside of your organization, if you want to integrate some of these services with other applications, um, and if you want to do all these things right for some better outcome for your consumers, then having a, you know a platform that a allows you to discover multiple sort of APIs across different platforms and then surface them in a common way, we think is is very critical to certainly uh, connect the old uh, with the new, but also to put you in a position where today, uh, which is sort of classic, you know, API management, um, you know, at, as time goes on, will become old uh, and make way for, for the new. And being in a place where you can, you know, use the right protocol, um, you know, use the right traffic management approach uh, and use the right infrastructure uh, is necessary, we think, uh, for your business to scale as you wish. And so I'll end with this, um, uh, let's call it Vince's law. And it's a sort of a tie back to sort of the matrix uh, meme that I've used here, which is, you know, unfortunately, no one can tell you really what your API ecosystem or your matrix uh, really is. Uh, you'll have to discover it and, and trace it for yourself. And the point being is that, um, you know, most inter enterprises do want to de decentralize innovation. Uh, and APIs, we think, are core and certainly highly correlated with innovation. And how that sort of grows uh, and evolves uh, to meet, you know, product market fit or business outcomes you know, how you then ultimately manage it uh, and scale it as your enterprise grows is critical. So how do, you, how do you discover it? Ultimately, how do you trace it and then align it to some business outcome? So uh, I think with that, I'll stop and, and thank you all for your time and uh, see if there's any questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Vince. So if I understand well, so because uh, I help many companies into implementing, you know, API strategy, uh, and what happens most of the time, as you say, different entities have different API management solutions. And then comes the solution where all the if partners... Maybe if you're talking, I, unfortunately, I can't hear you. Yeah, you can't hear me? No, you can't? Okay, I'll try again. Okay, so it's, uh, it seems uh, we're... People are able to hear both of us, but you, you still don't hear me, right? So people are hearing us, but we don't hear each other. Uh, okay. I would ask the team. Yeah, yeah, Scott, you, you can hear me. Ivan, you can hear me. Uh, is it better for Vince or me to refresh? Okay, so Vince has refreshed. Um, else it will be me hi Vince can you hear me yep I got you now yeah okay now so the question I had is that 
in many organizations have, have, have helped big companies to adopt API strategies, right? And what happens is that they started API programs, exactly as you explained, in different parts. They have different API management solution. And at some mm -hmm. point, they, they want to make a group decision, right? Mm -hmm. And so they have to frustrate 90% of the team to adopt one solution that has been decided. So every API center of enablement that wanted to promote decentralization, independence about yeah. choosing their own tools, you know, it's, the, the, it doesn't happen. With this agent, with the catalog and the trustability agent, are you saying that now you are able to let in the team choose independently because the the, the federation mm -hmm. will be done later? Yeah, that, that's exactly it, right? And we have customers that have uh, invested and deployed uh, exactly along that route where they have multiple uh, different API platforms, some acquired, uh, some, you know, claim, you know, even as a few days ago, I was on with a large and they said, you know, we're, we're now looking to move to our fourth generation uh, API platform. And, and their view is, um, you know, uh, to, to allow, whether it's lines of business or other product teams to move forward at the speed at which they need to move forward, right, with their innovation and delivery. And if that means they want to, you know, bring in something else to sort of manage the interface because it's it's faster, it's it's easier. Maybe they're using open source, etc. Our view is, well, that's what you should do, right? Um, is to sort of decentralize that innovation, while at the same time know that at some point you're going to have to connect it, right? You're going to need that common catalog. You're going to need the ability to sort of discover all of the services and be able to understand what's being used and not what's not being used. Um, so yeah, exactly what you described is is uh, is certainly what we believe and um, what we see customers doing with us. Yeah, but uh, as again, as you said, the governance still is needed and you need at least overall KPIs for your APIs, right? You need still to decide yep. and understand the stuff, but you have to do it whatever the gateway that has been chosen under the API management solution. Yep. It works with, totally. every, it works with every solution on the market so far? No, we don't have support for every solution, but we do uh, have support for essentially the, the, the largest ones and uh, an SDK that allows it to be extended. You need something that we either don't directly support or is not community supported. If you want something that something else, uh, we have an SDK that can be easily extended. So some people open APIs, you are opening API management. <laughs> yeah. You say that? Yeah. It's a opening API management. It's, uh, you know, you can say it's an API iPads. I don't know. Right. But, uh, you know, the idea that, um, you know, uh, customers are, are going to want to sort of pick no different than customers today are choosing multiple cloud vendors. Right. Not 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 everybody is always on just this one cloud vendor. They have some stuff here, some stuff there, et cetera. It's, it's very analogous to that. What, what you see happening in API management is, you know, you're not you may not only have one API management vendor. You may have multiple API management vendors. And so, you know, how do you enable that to be a successful outcome for customers is what we're what we're working on solving. Yeah, and so a lot of people consider the API management has become a commodity, but what mm -hmm. we're seeing is that actually there are maybe some di different API management solutions for different use cases or locations or whatever. Yep. So, okay, just let, as you were seeing, the wilderness happen, right? Mm -hmm. Let the evolution happen. We will yep. we will federate later. That's right. Yeah, um, exactly right. Okay, it's really interesting. I think it's a, it's a game changer uh, in the space. Uh, so I don't know what what uh, what does that mean in terms of uh, number and, and and adoption, but just to say like yeah, it's a it's something that uh, that really need to be considered to all the potential consultants or companies that we uh, that are that are listening to to this talk. Yep. Yeah, we are at the time. Thank you very much, Vince. Thank you for having me.